Hello and welcome back. Now let's cut it short, shall we? In this episode, I'm going to show you my still making setup. For those who have watched my previous episode, you should watch again because the base of the setup here is the same one using the the sensor and the hoppers to send the items. But now let's talk about the differences. First, here we have the thermometer to the temperature of the alloying of the steel, so it's going to put when it is steel, not the iron or rogue iron. Here we have a change, we have a change of the sensor of weight of grams to kilos. And as you can see, that is the setting of it. Why we have this value is very simple, actually. It's simple the reason because it is the weight of a uh, ingot of steel. So whenever we have less than one one ingot of a materials inside the crucible, it's going to send a headstone to cause the pulse that it was in the past. Now the difference is that we have here two blocks here. Here on the side here we have a kind of a end gate. We have a a a headstone torch from the crossbow and another headstone torch from the materials to make the steel. So when both of it are correctly, they're gonna be like this. Like if the, if this was making a steel for me, it was gonna be on. So it's gonna turn this headstone out that is connected to the piston to, to turn off the crossbow. That's because I want that when this here is empty or have less less than one ingot of steel and I don't have any more materials to make a steel, I want this to shut down the crossbow. And for that reason, the burning box here must be liquid or gas and the crucible must be made of steel. So yes, steel. For those who have watched my previous automation of iron, knows why. The reason is the same. Now, here we have something kind of different. It, it, I don't know how we call this. It is the base of an uh, uh, end gate, but one of, one of the inputs is inverted. In this case, the the items, the crossbow is the same. This is made so when this is empty here, when you don't have enough materials to create a steel, it's gonna send a signal here. So even if the crossbow turns on or off, the pulse is not gonna be sent. So if I have any left materials in one of the Chassis is not gonna, gonna, gonna arrive into the crossbow and screw everything up. As you can see, I can open. I can open and close this as much as I, I, I want. And, but the pulse is not gonna happen. Here we have two hoppers. One for the carbon and one for the steel for the iron itself here as you can see here and here we have the item sensors which is one if you have less than one carbon or less than 50 iron to make the steel send the headstone signal and stop this this is why it is closer than because those things here are empty and yes we have here two hoppers because when the hopper is receiving the headstone signal to prevent it from sending items into the pipe, it also stops it from getting items from the top, from the chest on the top. And since this is a lot of material, it's gonna be not, be go not go going to be fast enough to get 15 iron before the next step. So this setup here is just to cause a double, a double thing. As long as I have material, and this is as long as I have material and this is has something to produce, it's gonna run. As, as soon as I don't have any more 
thing to produce and this get empty or have less than one ingot, it's gonna stop. So this setup here should never ever cause this crossbow to melt down. Now here comes the point of the setup because making steel it is kind of easy, isn't it? But it, at the same time it is not. Look at the recipe. We see here that the it is 15 rogue iron and one carbon to make 50 steel ingots. But that's a problem. The crucible only holds 16 of it. So what do I do? Should I send the carbon first then the 15 iron later on? But if I do that, it is gonna be completely full and take a longer time to start melting. And when when I, I output two ingots, more two iron gonna get in and gonna get in very, it's gonna cool down again and need to heat up. But the problem is that when I hit to the part when I have only, only 16 inside, the time it will take for just two modes to put 16 ingots is gonna make the crucible melt down unless you have a very high tier crucible but uh, we don't want to expand the very high crucibles now try to break uh, carbon and iron into a ratio of 1 to 50 it's not uh, an easy task it's really not easy but uh, I have a way to do go around of it but for most of you, this is not going to be very interesting because it's not the common way to do that. I have to simply pick the carbon and break it down into tiny piles. As you see, we have now 9 stacks of 9, 9, or 9 carbon, pi, carbon piles. I can also break all my iron into also tiny piles of it. And look at what we have here. 50 iron break in exactly 450 tiny piles of iron dust. So we now have 9 stacks of 15 iron dust and 9 carbon dust. So we have an actual percent ratio to send to the crossbow. This is the only G this is the setup here. We go here and place everything to be tiny piles of carbon. Everything. Everything indeed. I know it's kinda of boorish, but it is here. And now we place here all the tiny pile of iron. And this is gonna create the exact amount of alloy to work. And as you probably saw into the background, it causes a pulse. Now this crucible here is not empty anymore. As you see, it has some material on it. 50 tiny piles of iron gonna make about 5 ingots in a, and 5 nuggets of it. That's why we have the setup here, because the five ingots are gonna be extracted by the molds, but you're gonna have still five nuggets of steel here. But since this is gonna send a signal to the system to send more iron and carbon, it's gonna be producing all the way until it gets completely empty. And that's that gonna happen, happens only when we have made this set up, this send here about nine times. So this is gonna work all the way. But probably saying, man, but tiny piles, I have to create a system to make the tiny piles of it. Yes, you have. Such is life. You can also use it nuggets, because a nugget is a tiny pile of, is the same value as a tiny pile. So either tiny piles or nuggets of iron. Now let's turn this bad boy up. And now we just have to wait a lot of time here. Here you can see that the temperature is rising constantly, but not very fast. It is going for about one 
Kelvin a most every click of it. You probably gonna say, man, this is slow. Yes, this is slow, but this is also safe. Placing a strong one here is not a device for a long time. When we have access to electricity and we can use the electric heaters instead of the burning boxes, we can use the ceramic crucible and a lot uh, stronger heating source. But for now, without any kind of automation, this is the way. We are getting close to the 2000 Kelvin and the magic should, should soon start to happen and we should soon start to see why I meant by using the crucible of steel. As you see here, the steel is getting being produced and the crucible is still getting up because as it got more empty, it's gonna heat up faster. So using a crucible of steel, make sure that it, it, it is not gonna heat up too much. As you see, the temperature is rising and steel crucible melts down with 2500. Kelvin, or even less. So we are close to it. The, the, there's the four pieces now. The, the fifty piece is gonna get here. It got empty and received it. Empty not. It, it had less than ingot and now received a new batch of iron and carbon dust to be processed and it is heating up again. So this process go, goes on for us as long as we have the material to run. Let's check here. 5 ingots of steel. And if you take a, a closer look into the crossbow, we can see we have it a little more of here. I, it's already past the time, isn't it? Anyway, this is my setup to make it steel. It's not the most impressive one, and probably use a system that most of you would not want to use, that uses tiny pile of carbon and tiny piles of iron or iron nuggets. And this is going to be it for this episode. This is Ungat. Thank you for watching.